from, from plane. So, so offsetting from an existing plane. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to use my XY plane as, a, as the reference. And I'm going to make the offset, in this case, 24 feet. And click OK. And so now you'll see, you'll see this plane pop up in your view. And you can see the outline of this, this plane is really just visual because the, the plane itself actually goes out into space infinitely. Um, if you were to use this plane for something else uh, over here, uh, it doesn't matter because this plane re reaches out into space in all directions. Um, this, this visual representation of the plane shows uh, a perimeter here, but that's the actual case is that it spreads out in all directions infinitely. Um, and now that we've created a plane, because we're going to use uh, architecture in, the arch architecture and structures workbench, um, I also want to create a, a level grid. So I have my my kind of top of roof plane, and then my ground plane in this case is my X Y. So I'm going to go over to uh, there's grid tools. Um, you need to make sure that you're that you're in the uh, if you go under the start menu that you're under the architecture and structures workbench. Um, that's the third one down under project center. You can tell that you're in that workbench because you'll see an icon for that workbench in the upper upper right corner here. So I'm going to create a grid, and I'm going to if you see there's a little there's like a little triangle in the in the lower um, right corner here, and if I if I click that it gives me the other other buttons in that tool set. So I'm going to create a grid object here, and for now I'm going to click OK. I could give it a name if I want. I could say grid levels. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select my XY plane, and I'm going to hold down the control button, and my plane 1, so my ground plane and my top of roof plane. And I'm going to go over to the second option under my tool set here, grid levels. It's going to say multiple, because that means I'm selecting multiple elements, click OK, and if I wanted to, to rename those, I can just double click the element and say ground plane, double click this, say roof peak. Okay, so now we're going we're gonna to draw that last vertical line. I'm going to select my line tool here, my point, my direction, x, y. Now, instead of adding uh, a dimension here, I'm going to select an element. In this case, I'm going to select my roof peak grid level down here in the tree over here. And so what that's, what that's going to do is link this line to that plane. If I change the height of that plane, it's going to change the height of this line, which is in turn also going to change the shape of the of the roof. So I click OK. Now, the last thing we need to do to create the roof surface is draw a perimeter uh, polyline that defines the the edge of that of that roof. So I'm going to go over to my line tool and expand and select my polyline tool. And then I'm going to select the top points of the uh, of the vertical lines here. 
First this, then this, then this point. And the last thing I want to do after I've selected the fourth point is select the close polyline. So now we have now we have a perimeter which uh, which gives us a roof surface. Uh, last thing is we need to create the surface itself. Oh, and I, actually I want to indicate something, I want to show something here that's happened. If you notice, the, the polyline has been inserted, both the line and the polyline have been inserted inside the grid level. That's because I wasn't paying attention to where uh, things are being placed. So I need to, uh, I need to change that. Um, I right click on my line and say change geometric set and I'm going to select the geometric set here and that's just going to remove it out of, outside of that. Do the same thing for that. So if you ever if you ever realize that you're in the wrong uh, in the wrong thing you just need to you can just use that tool. So let's right click the geometric set and make that define a work object so that now everything we build is is placed inside there. Um, the, uh, the fill tool is over here on the on the right. I'm going to use that and select my polyline and right away it gives me this this hyperbolic surface. Now, um, it looks like we're kind of uh, getting close to to the. Uh, we have about 15 minutes left. Um, I'd really like to show uh, at least how to create some beams, um, and we'll kind of pick up things uh, in the next session, um, where we'll also be talking about walls and doors and windows. So um, what I want to do is I want to open up, if I go back to the, uh, the quick start um, folder, there's, there's a cat part here called starter sketches. So I'm going to grab that starter sketches and drag it into my scene. And I want to grab this grid. So if you want to if you want to bring any element from one part into another part, all you need to do is copy paste. So I can right click and copy that grid sketch and go into uh, the um, the part I just have been working in. And um, if I right click on geometric set and say paste. It's going to put that sketch inside the geometric set. And there it is, right? And the only thing is that um, this sketch, if we change the perimeter sketch, this sketch isn't necessarily going to change. So we need to do one thing in order to connect this grid sketch to our original perimeter sketch. So I'm going to go into that grid sketch, double click, I'm going to go to Use Edges. Oh, and I realize I need to actually bring in the other sketch also because it's going to use it's going to use uh, some of the elements from that other sketch. So let me exit that real quick. Go back to my starter sketch. I'm going to also copy this partitions. And I'm going to paste that. And now um, I'm going to enter the partition sketch by double clicking. And under Use Edges, I want to double click each one of these. And I'm going to select the output lines that we originally defined in the in the sketch one. So in this case I'm going to select south, 
click 